guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Valiant Wars by SMG or Strange Machine Games. In Valiant Wars you're going to be playing two to five players. It takes about 30 to 45 minutes to play and it's for ages 12 and up. In the game you're playing a deck builder of sorts. There's going to be champions and heroes and all sorts of different characters that are going to help you along but unfortunately there are also dark omens and if those cards get drawn two of them specifically then you're going to be out if they push your duck dead and push your luck deck builder of sorts and you have to be very careful it plays similarly to games uh, like aeg's mythic veil or mystic veil in which you're trying to avoid the bad cards and get as many good cards as possible and this game instead of like uh, unlike that one is you're going to actually be building a deck that continuously grows larger and the more cards in it the better because that's going to progressively allow you to get the cards you want and avoid those dark omens whereas a game like that actually sticks with a certain number of cards and it just lets you improve upon them this game is going to give you 10 cards you get soldiers you're going to get the two dark omens and then you're going to get gold cards making up a 10 10 set deck which you're going to shuffle up and draw and draw and draw and avoid getting the dark omens if you get two you're out of the game for that round and if you're not you'll be able to purchase more champions and or soldiers or gold however you're also going to be competing for different areas in the game and if you gather those areas you're going to get victory points 10 is all you need to win but each of those cards comes with a drawback and as you get three six and nine victory points you're going to get additional dark omen cards to put in your deck making it even more likely for you to fail anyway let's go ahead take a look down below and I will show you how to play the game and then of course what I think about it right after with my review. So here we have the game Valiant Wars by SMG and I've set it up for two players but you can go up to five if you'd like. It's the same setup regardless of the number of players just make sure that every single player gets 10 cards. These are what are included. You're going to be getting a deck of cards that are basically considered the hero deck. There's going to be different things like necromancers or lunar witches, different heroes, wing knights, apprentices, and so on and so forth. There's probably like 30 different types of cards roughly in there. There is a soldier deck and these guys are all free. Uh, they have a value of one sword and treasures cost one and they have a value of one treasure. These are dark omen and you'll be getting these every single time you get these cards here up to once every time you get three of these cards here uh, and that is basically something you do not want to get and if you can avoid getting them which is not really possible. Uh, if you could avoid getting them, that'd be the best thing. So hopefully when you draw, you don't get any at all. Uh, this is the village deck or castle deck. There's all these different types of cards in here. You're going to go ahead and shuffle this deck and uh, make sure that you turn it up and so people can see what the top card is. This will give you victory points uh, as well as negatives for getting them because they're going to go into your deck as well. And these will represent the victory points you're going to get throughout the game. There's threes and ones and even fives because you need a total of ten. Deal out five of these cards from the hero deck, out face up so people can see them, and then take your ten cards. Every player is going to get five treasure cards, two, three dark omens, and two soldier cards, which means you're going to get five of the gold currency, two swords, and then these three cards, which are not good because when you get two of them, you're in trouble, but they also come with gold on them, so they're going to help you uh, purchase items as well throughout the game. Uh, the game also comes with the rule book, which is very easy to understand, as well as, of course, it has a guide for each of the characters and how they function in the game, so not only do you get to know what they do here, but a little more in-depth information in the rule book, as well as, of of course the box for the game itself and that is pretty much what you get in the game valiant wars let's go ahead and take you down below i will show you how to play a couple rounds of the game and then we'll come up and i'll give you my review so back down here we've got our two player setup we're going to take each of the players decks and we're going to give them a good shuffle remember you want to make sure you give them a good shuffle specifically because you do not want to get your dark omens too close together if you do you're going to have a bad time just like in mystic veil vale, you want to avoid those nasty pestilence cards i think they're called and uh, after you've done a good shuffle, then the game is actually going to be played simultaneously, which is a fun and interesting twist on deck builders, of course. So we went ahead and shuffled both of these decks here and placed them out next to the players. And we'll go ahead and set them down there so you can get a good look at the top area because this is where we're laying them out. And everybody's going to go three, two, one, and flip over the first card. And then at any point in time, players can 
choose to stop. They can say stop. And when they do that, that will allow them to purchase before anybody else. The first person to call it is the first person who gets to take any of these or the treasures for one or even soldiers for zero. You can only purchase two cards regardless of the combination though. Otherwise, if you wish to continue playing the game, three, two, one, and then a flip again. And just put them to the side of your uh, top area of where your deck is. And you're gonna keep going. Three, two, one. Ooh, nice. This is exactly what we want. Three, two, one. Oh, we came up with a Dark Omen here, which means if this player gets another Dark Omen, then this player is going to bust. And you never want to bust in this game because if you do, you lose your turn and you cannot purchase. This player over here is doing just fine, though. He's got three currency and one of the swords here. Let's go ahead and go again. Three, two, one, and flip. Oh, now both of them have a Dark Omen. So do they want to keep going or do they want to stop? Well, let's go ahead and go one more time and just see what happens. Three, two, one stop and then stop so they're both done now and that might have been a good call because maybe the next one was a dark omen <laughs> just actually just happened like that and oh they both were dark omens so they both made a really good choice in this matter uh because this player said stop first he's gonna get a buy first and he's got one two three four and five currency and one sword sword so let's go ahead and see we have these these are costing really really rather cheap anywhere from five to, to zero here uh, four and one, we'll go ahead and take these guys here. That's a white knight. It has a symbol here, which can interact with other cards. It has three swords on it, and it gives you plus one sword for each of your face-up cards that have this symbol, which is this one. So that's actually very beneficial. Just go ahead and put that next to your deck. As well as this one here, when you play it down, target player gets to draw a card. It can be used as an attack or a benefit to you, depending on what time in which you're playing it. Uh, I believe that you're going to add more cards to the stack here. That's one thing the rule doesn't say. Rulebook doesn't say specifically, but I think when you buy them, the next player gets a chance and you refill this. But I could be wrong. You might not refill it. Go ahead and check the rule specifically to find out. They'll probably have an edit by the time uh, their campaign is up. One, two, three, four, and five, and one. So the same thing. And he's going to go ahead and pick up this guy here. And then he's going to go ahead and pick up a treasure card. And that will be his two cards. Refill this again. And then after that, you're going to check swords. The person who has the most swords is going to be the one who gets the village here on top. This player has one and this player has one. So in this case, it is a tie, which means that this will stay here until the next round. So you're going to basically be fighting for it again. But now you'll have two additional cards in your arsenal to go ahead and do so. Now, provided this actually was the case, and this maybe was over here instead, he would have two and he would have one. Then this player would get this card and put it into his stack along with taking one of these victory cards here, which we place to the side of his deck, signifying that he has one of the 10 it needed to win. If at any point a player has three, six, or nine of these, then they're going to add a dark omen to their deck as well for each of the very uh, each of the sets of three that they get. So that is basically how these cards guys work. And they actually have a negative benefit to them, <laughs> a negative benefit, a negative interaction whenever they get drawn. So let's go ahead and take all these guys here, put them on top of this deck, along with all these guys here, and these and put them on top of this deck and then we're going to go ahead and shuffle one more time show you another round of the game and we're going to go ahead and do it again and see what happens but this is pretty much how the game works the only thing that you really don't know now other than um other than the fact that these guys are going to be put in the deck and how these all function really is the fact that all of these characters here have their own special abilities as well as their own sword values and sword value is the most important thing in this game because that is what's going to determine whether you get these specific villages or not and you're definitely going to want them because they are what have you win the game uh maybe we're going to show you how somebody busts this time we'll see if i'm feeling a little more a little more risky actually i'm glad i didn't last time though because they both would have busted and that wouldn't be good for a review, right? Okay, so these guys have all been shuffled pretty good. And once again, simultaneously, we will begin at three, two, one, and a flip. Ooh, a dark omen. So another rule too is if you get two dark omens in a row at the very beginning, they actually will be combined into one dark omen so that you can keep playing. You don't have to instantly bust, which is nice because that means there's only gonna be one more in your deck when you're playing before you get three victory points. Nonetheless, we're going to keep going, but as you can see here, the apprentice says to target a player, this is when it's played, target a player, and have that player draw one. Let's go ahead and have this guy draw one. Oh, two dark omens, which means that these guys get combined and the game will now continue. Three, two, one, and a flip. Three, two, one, and a flip. Three, two, one, and a flip. Ooh, three, two, one, and a flip. Ooh, now he's got one dark and he's got one dark. Ooh, let's go ahead and go one more time. Three, two, one. Okay, that's good. Should we stop there? No, I'm feeling risky. Let's go one more time. Ooh, we're still going good here. Do I want to keep going? Mm, 
Sounds dangerous. I won't do it. If I did, though, what would have happened? Oh. Oh, he would have been fine, though. Okay. So he would have busted, actually. But luckily, we didn't go ahead and go again. Busting is very simple, right? You just lose. You have to wait till the next round. So uh, this person said stop first. This person said stop second. And then we rinse and repeat and buy stuff. One, two, three, four gold. He's got... Three swords plus one sword for each of these cards that are stacked here. So this is going to be three, four, and five. So there's, yeah, five and six and seven total. This guy here only has two, which means he is going to actually win the village tile here as well as a victory point. Very, very nice. Uh, he's got his uh, four currency, so he can go ahead and purchase. Uh, let's see what he wants to do here. He will purchase this Lunar Witch, and he'll also go ahead and take a treasure. And this player over here, he's got five. So he will actually take this hero here, which can't be flipped or the target of any effects. Certain cards can actually have you flip a character over, and in which case that character is not of any value at all. And then he can also go ahead and purchase a free soldier. And that's, that's the basic idea of it. These are going to get shuffled back into your deck along with the cards you just purchased and any cards that you might have gotten, like the village tiles here. And you're going to keep going up into the point somebody gets to 10 victory points. As you can see in this deck here specifically, there's villages, there's cities, there's farmlands, um, and there's castles. And all of them have a range of different victory points that can help you progress throughout the game. And you never know what you're actually going to end up uh, getting. And of course, the better valued ones are going to give you some kind of negative effect compared to, you know, this one here is only one victory, but it's minus one whenever it gets drawn. This one here is three, but it's minus five whenever it's drawn, making it very less likely for you to continue. It's a, it's a good catch-up mechanic for other players who are a little farther behind. But that is the game Valiant Wars. That's how it is played for the most part. And uh, let's come up now and discuss what I think about it. So Valiant by Strange Machine Games, what do I think about this? Well, first of all, let's just go in order with thematics. Thematics? Theme? In the game, you're playing as a noble lord of the land of Valiance, I believe, and you're trying to gather an army after the collapse of the world, trying to restore order, gaining these villages and towns and farmlands and castles and all that good stuff, and having the larger military force and other players. However, there's dark omens of the world in collapse and chaos that will be drawn, or things you're going to be thinking about, which are these guys here, and as they get picked up, you're going to suffer that mental... A strain and it does work thematically as the game goes this is a very stressful aggressive deck builder because you're pushing your luck really really tightly you get one of those things and now you have to really decide if you want to push it again whereas a game like Myth mystic veil i think it goes three times uh and you can also build your deck to the point where you don't have to worry about those in that specific game in this one here as you gain stronger forces and are pushing yourself past your limits you're going to be getting more dark omens and you're going to basically be increasing your deck size along with of course even the victory condition cards are going to put you along some setbacks sometimes it's not even maybe worth picking those guys up because if they give you negative three gold and you keep drawing that at the very beginning of the game it's going to push you back down so there's certain situations where you're like you know what maybe i'm gonna actually let this one pass and just worry about getting my forces uh stronger or maybe worry about getting more gold at the beginning of the game to make your, yourself a better candidate for victory later on this game is a lot of fun if you like mythic veil mystic veil Mystic Veil? Mythic Veil? Mystic Veil. You're going to like this one. This is almost a light version of that, but it's also different in the sense that you're actually actively pushing your opponents, if you'd like, to bust. You'll be able to make them draw additional cards, which could benefit them, but very likely is going to mess with them. Those cards are going to help you and aid you, in, depending on how you're building the deck, by giving you additional swords when you draw them and place them down on the field there. The theme just works very well as an aggressive combat push-your-luck deck building games. And you are a deck building your deck's gonna get rather large as you continue the game specifically if you don't win every single match like i did my first two games Ooh, so you knew you know i'm gonna like this type of game i mean i do like mystic veil it does present a lot of wonderful interesting aspects to it and this one does that as well and it is different enough this game is gonna be something i'm gonna keep in my collection just because it is a game i like with all the categories i enjoy but it's also a little bit more aggressive and it's also a lot quicker of a game. This is a fast-paced game, and it has some unique aspects to it as well. So let's talk about mechanics. You're drawing cards, one, two, three, drop, one, two, three, drop, and then the first person that say stop, 
they're the ones that get to draw pick first. And that's really useful, specifically if you want that five point card. So you might actually stop earlier, even if you don't even have a single Dark Omen in front of you, because you want the hero and you're afraid somebody else might go for it, especially if they're already close to getting that second one. You know how many cards in your deck, you know the variability and the likelihood or probability of getting another Dark Omen. So you can have a good idea of when to stop and when not to stop, when to push your luck and when not to push your luck. But sometimes it pays off to do so. If you like push your luck style games, if you like deck builders and you want something quick, something very easy that the kids can get involved with, this is going to be your go-to game. This is something that's very, very simple. And I think specifically for me, if I want to play something like Mystic Veil, but I do not want to have to go through all the rules and all the crazy setup, this is going to be the one I would jump to because I'm just going to lay out the four sets of cards. I'm going to go ahead and lay out the hero shuffle and deal out four, and give everybody a deck of cards, and, 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 10 cards, shuffle them up and let's go. We're ready to go. Very, very simple. You can teach the game while you're playing it. After the first round, everybody is going to understand how to play. There's very few things that were confusing in this game. Uh, a few of the concerns I really had were just in the rules themselves. I just, they just need a few touch-ups like do heroes pop up after somebody has bought them specifically? how do certain cards work so for instance one card will copy another card does it only copy a card that hits the field instantly or does it copy any card and it does tell you in the rules if you look in the appendix uh, that you simply will turn that card to the side and that will indicate that it is being copied once and it can be any card so there is some nice um nice explanations of all the different characters and whatnot in the very back of the book which will give you exactly what you need to understand all the different characters overall it's a fun game the artwork itself is beautiful it gives you exactly what you need. I, and I like the fact that they went ahead and made a full art card. All of them are full art, full art cards, including the treasure, including the dark omens. They're very cartoony. They're very vibrant. They're very kid friendly and fun. There is a lot of diversity in the game. Pretty much every type of person you're going to find in this type of game. And even the soldiers, they went out of their way to make additional artwork for the same basic card, which is also a nice little additive as well. I am in love with the artwork, in fact. It's it's just really, really fun and really kiddy. Now, is it like the most highly detailed and whatnot? Probably not, comparatively to some of their games like Robotech and whatnot, where they that's, that's uh, more realistic uh, 80s, 90s, 90s cartoon style, where it's got all the everything. This one's more going to be like Naruto slash bleach type of artwork but i just i really in fact this one reminds me of renora zoro hmm, maybe maybe some kind of likeness maybe there's some easter eggs in this anyway the game's fun if you want a game like mystic veil but you want it for uh more uh you want like quicker and you want it to be a little more aggressive and you want something that is lighter and easier for kids to pick up this is the one i would suggest for you i really like this game i have no qualms about it specifically there are certain people who don't like the luck factor and the fact that you're going to be drawing and pushing your luck and sometimes it's not going to go well for you and even the fact that some of the cards will ne negatively interact with you so for instance getting these villages and cities and whatnot you may never even draw them oddly enough and you can actually win each and every round I, for the first two games i literally never had to deal uh, with losing any of my villages or cities that were up for battle so that that can happen too which can be kind of frustrating for people who don't like this type of a game but if you're going into this this is what to expect anyway and you probably already know that anyway definitely take a look at valiant wars down below in the description it's on kickstarter if you're interested i, I recommend this game and you know who you are if you want it all right guys thanks for watching another unfiltered gamer board game review if you like this video check out the rest of our videos here on youtube like subscribe and comment it does help and we do greatly appreciate it as well as taking a look at Valiant's, or <laughs> Valiant Wars down below. Now I'm getting the, the name of the city and the name of the game confused. It's on Kickstarter. You'll like it. You <laughs> build and push your luckers. <laughs> if you're like me, you'll enjoy the game. As well as take a look at our website, unfillinggame.com. Blah, 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 blah. Lost stuff on there. As well as taking a look at our friends, everythingboardgames.com, the giveaway geek, and uh, show me how to win some really cool other channels that you might enjoy as well that do stuff more than reviews. Probably a little more different types of stuff than my own site. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to doing some Valiant Wars with you next time. Bazinga!